You may already know this, but TV is dying. Most people just don't watch live television anymore, or at least pay for it. It's been on a steady decline for several years now, and it's only going to get worse from here, with more channels closing down in response to continuously low viewership. It's been well over three years since all of the Disney channels closed for good in the UK, Disney Channel, Disney XD, and Disney Junior all on the same day. It wasn't always just these three, however. Prior to September 2009, Disney XD was branded as Jetix, and before that, Fox Kids. For Disney Junior, it was Playhouse Disney. And for Disney Channel? THE Disney Channel. No, not Disney Channel. THE Disney Channel. But notice how for XD, I didn't mention Toon Disney at all. I mean, it was definitely a thing here, but it wasn't replaced by XD. In fact, it closed a lot earlier than its American counterpart, being replaced with a movies channel by the name of Disney Cinemagic, a channel exclusively dedicated to showing Disney films and the occasional cartoon. But you might be wondering, what is a Disney Cinemagic? I'll tell you. Or visit this very obscure website. The brand was initially launched in 2006 as a European exclusive service spanning multiple countries within the region as part of a £100 million deal between Disney and Sky. The channel served as a home for UK TV premieres for their movies, though some countries went a little beyond that. The first Cinemagic was launched in Britain on the 16th of March 2006, just three days after SBN Classic. The launch coincided with the move of both Disney Channel and Playhouse Disney to the basic Sky pack. Package. And aside from that, most people were pretty mixed about it. Some unsurprisingly opposed to the rebrand, despite some of Toon Disney's programs only moving to different time slots and still being shown regularly. So in reality, there wasn't really much to complain here if you prefer to that stuff. All you needed to do was to switch over at the right time to catch them. Alongside the main channel, the time shift service for Cinemagic was also launched on the same day. It was pretty much the same feed, but an hour behind, and it may sound useful today, which it is, but back then it was pretty convenient to have these available in the event of missing a program you wanted to watch, though DVRs kind of eliminated that problem if you had access to them. Cinemagic was also made available through various different countries in Europe and not just the UK. The first to launch were Disney Cinemagic France and Belgium on the 4th of September 2007, also replacing their versions of Toon Disney, and following that was Cinemagic Spain in July 2008 and Portugal in October of that same year. And also these. In Scandinavian Italy, however, Cinemagic was launched as a block instead of its own separate channel, sharing time space with Disney Channel and Sky Cinema respectively. In some countries, Cinemagic was broadcast through both standard and high definition simultaneously, with France and Belgium among the first to launch in 2008, followed by the UK in December of that year. In terms of programming, Cinemagic was generally film-focused, airing both classic and modern features, animated or live-action. On an average day, Cinemagic's schedule was typically made up of a mixture between movies, half-hour cartoons, and animated shorts, all shown throughout the day, with seemingly no specific hours dedicated to each type. It would also serve as the main home for reruns of Toon Disney shows following its closure in 2006, usually consisting of Lilo and Stitch, Recess, Buzz Lightyear, House of Mouse, Emperor's New Groove, and Lloyd in Space. A good selection, I say. This may also explain why various captures of these shows have that little logo visibly sticking out. Cinemagic regularly reran these cartoons for several years following their official conclusions. It was mostly done as a way to fill up time when no movies were being shown, primarily through late night programming before closing down for the day. And what makes it better is that these cartoons were all broadcast through high def widescreen for a good while, providing providing high-quality broadcasts of shows that were originally presented through standard def. And in the UK, it was the only Disney Channel during the 2010s to not broadcast for 24 hours, as this was before the main channel and Disney Junior would begin broadcasting past midnight around 2018, a full five years after its closure. With movie premieres, they would usually begin showing new releases at least a year after their theatrical debut, while for DVD movies, it probably would have been more or less a few months. The type of movies you probably often see would range from mainline Disney, live action, Pixar, and direct-to-video sequels. You know the ones. On occasion, these movies were accompanied by their respective documentaries, primarily those showcasing relevant production footage and the creative team's journey to making the film. So basically, the kind of stuff you typically used to find on DVD. <laughs> 
With a lifespan of just 13 years, Cinemagic never really changed its branding all too often. Throughout its life, there have only been two distinct logos used, with the first one lasting from March 2006 to September 2007, and the second logo, also the last, from 2007 to 2019. You've probably never seen this one before, and that's because it didn't last very long. It was only ever used in the UK, as by the time it launched in France, they had already updated the channel branding with a completely new look. This version of Cinemagic is easily the most iconic, and for good reason too. The items used were very creative and utilised existing movies at the time for some very interesting visuals and ideas. You've got Meet the Robinsons, Finding Nemo, Sleeping Beauty, Monsters Inc, Lilo and Stitch, Cars, and possibly more that I may have missed out. The items preceding these weren't nearly as colourful, and the logo never really changed, opting instead for the same old look. With these bumpers, they occasionally messed with the logo to create different variants, depending on the theme that was used. And of course, nothing lasts forever. The Cinemagic brand lasted for well over a decade, though not every version closed at the exact same time. It was a very slow process that involved phasing out each feed one after the other. The first to go was Cinemagic Portugal in 2012, followed by the UK feed in March of 2013. The Portuguese feed was replaced by their version of Disney Junior, while the British feed was replaced by Sky Movies Disney, which was basically another movies channel, but this time for fully integrated with the Sky Movies brand. This would last another seven years until December of 2020, when the service was shut down and replaced with a completely different Sky Cinema channel, marking the end of Disney's quarter-century presence in UK television. Next on the chopping block was Cinemagic Spain in January 2015, and then France later that year. The French feed was immediately replaced by Disney Cinema, which was practically the same deal, but through a different name. This service would last another five years until 2020, when it was finally shut down for good, along with Disney XD France. Following its discontinuation in both Scandinavia and France, Italy and Germany became the remaining few channels left in the region. This continued for another four years until June of 2019, when the Italian bloc was closed forever, followed by Cinemagic Germany in September of that year, finally bringing the Cinemagic brand to an end after 13 years of service. Coincidentally, the German feed was closed when Disney began pulling most most of their international TV networks off the air in favour of their own streaming service Disney+, Plus, allowing them to host their own shows and movies without the need to renew contracts with other companies to host their content. And speaking of Disney+, Plus, while it wasn't the initial reason for why Disney Cinemagic UK closed, it certainly may have played a role in Germany's closure. The same can be said for Sky Cinema Disney, the very same channel that replaced Cinemagic in the UK, which was closed only a few months following Disney Channel XD and Junior. Most of them closed unceremoniously, with the UK feed cutting straight to a goodbye screen after airing its final program. Eh, still better than this. Germany, on the other hand, gave a pretty decent goodbye message after finishing its final movie, followed by a launch promo for Sky Cinema Special. Is it though? To be perfectly honest, I never watched Cinemagic growing up. I never had access to the channel, and I sadly missed out on something really cool. If it stayed on the air for a little longer, I probably would have seen it. Watching their archived bumpers and idents feels oddly comforting for reasons I cannot explain, and the channel's atmosphere feels very nice and welcoming. Oh well, Blu-ray's still better. 